Hello, this is Laura Duvalo and I'm back with a fun interactive card tutorial for you guys. I recently made a cheese shaped shadow box card with some new products and today we're taking it a step further and adding a Volvel mechanism to it. When we rotate the wheel, other birthday related images appear behind the largest cheese hole. Out of camera I cut two pieces with the main die from the shadow box dynamics. I wanted to use butterscotch cardstock but didn't have enough of it so I chose lemon chiffon instead. This will make it look more like Swiss cheese. As you can see the wheel from the peekaboo wheel dynamics is too big for our box. That's why I die cut a three and a half inch circle out of Copic friendly cardstock with the fifth largest die from the A2 stitched circle Stax Dynamics instead. We're also going to need the one and one eighth of an inch circle from the peekaboo wheel dynamics for the largest cheese hole. I'm also taking the three quarters and half an inch dies from the interactive swing dynamics for the smaller holes and homemade stencil that I made out of white acetate. I forgot to film the one inch circle from the A2 stitched circle stacks dynamics that I'll use for the notch. And remember that you don't need to use the exact products that I did. As long as everything fits inside of the box and the mechanism works, you're fine. And as always, you'll find all of the measurements in the YouTube description box. Let's start by finding the center of our rotating wheel. The easiest way is by die cutting it out of printer paper and folding it in half and then in half again. Now I'm going to grab a pencil so that I can draw lines in the creases. We can use this as a template to punch a little hole in the center of our heavyweight circle. After that, let's center the circle and punch another hole in our panel or frontal piece of the box. We can also trace the shape of our circle so that we know where we can cut our largest cheese hole. It's time to figure out the placement of our semicircular notch. We have very little wiggle room here, so let's adhere the one inch die as far to the edge as possible. I'm not a fan of running anything through the die cutting machine multiple times. That's because the cardstock flattens a little bit more each time. So let's die cut all of the holes at once. The large cheese hole has to be placed a little bit more towards the middle so that you can't see the images that we're going to stamp later through the notch. Here I'm just checking that everything will look good once the box is assembled. I'm also making sure that the dies are firmly attached with low tack tape before running everything through my die cutting machine. Okay, we've finished our die cutting, so let's grab a little brad and attach the circle to the back of the panel. Now we can use a pencil to softly trace the area where it's safe to stamp and color. Let's start by holding the pencil tip to the circle through the notch while we slowly rotate it with our other hand. Next, we'll trace the one and one eighth of an inch circles onto our wheel. If we slightly overlap them, we can fit four images on it. I'm also numbering them in the order that they will appear, so I won't get confused. Hopefully, you're able to see the soft pencil markings on your screens. I use stamps from the following Birdie Brown sets for my cheese shadow box card. Mice Day to Celebrate, Birthday Buds and Sweet Birthday Wishes. We can use the same circle die to make a little mask out of printer paper. And now we're ready to use Extreme Black Hybrid ink to stamp our images onto the wheel. So placing the mask, inking and stamping. First the larger mouse, then the balloon, present and finally the smaller mouse. And here's the result of the coloring. You'll find a list of the Copic markers that I used in the description box below. Let's have a look at the effect when rotating the wheel. It looks great so we can move on to adding the final details before assembling the card. 
Here I'm using Butterscotch and Craft Premium Dye Ink, the handmade acetate template from before, and a very light hand to add some air bubbles to our cheese. To achieve a 3D effect, I'm concentrating the ink in the lower right edge of the circles. Okay, we're finally ready to assemble the shadow box. I use strong score tape, but you could use any strong adhesive for this. If you're afraid you'll do it all wonky, just adhere the pieces together while they are standing on the table. As you can see, I've added a couple of holes on the other part of the box as well. If you have any suitable hole punches, you can add more if you want to. Just make sure that they don't interfere with the rotating wheel. This is looking great, so we can move on to the final touches. The front was looking too plain, so I decided to add another mouse peeping in through one of the fake holes to see what he was missing. Lastly, I covered the brad with a banner, die cut with one of the dies from the Mini Mail Dynamics out of Caribbean Sea cardstock. The sentiment is from the Birthday Bod stamp set. That's it for today, I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. If you have any questions or just want to say hi, leave a comment and I'll get back to you. Thank you so much for watching, bye bye, hasta la próxima!